Good morning, everyone. I hope you're feeling great today. Welcome to another edition of Hand Built Pottery. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks for joining. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So at this time, I'm going to ask you all to unmute yourselves. Thank you. And be mindful of any background noise that you have, like music or the television or any talking. If that happens, it's no problem. Just remember to mute yourselves. Thank you so much. Um, everybody feeling okay? Yes. Are you all right? Yes. Yes. So how many people... <laughs> How many people what? How many people have played today? Anybody? One? I do. It's okay if you don't because I'm just gonna save uh, this probably project until the next class anyway so that we don't continue to make too many things. So that was like only two people. All right, so I will be uh, I just want to say before anybody asks, which is no problem, but I will be giving you all another um, fi uh, firing schedule to fire your pieces or whatever next week. So we'll have a schedule going next week. Um, first thing I want to do is put on my apron and I'm going to be, that's backward. So last week, uh, miraculously, I don't even know how it, the time just went by. I guess we were having fun, but we stayed online for probably about an hour and a half when my classes are usually like just 30 minutes. Class started at 1030 and it was over like probably like 12, 10, 12, 20, I remember. However, uh, <laughs> I called y'all party poopers last week because some of y'all didn't take out no clay and work. I think Miss Diana managed to do some work and if I'm not mistaken, um, Fan and Cumberland made the entire uh, uh, dish, animal dish, he made an elephant. And I think somebody else, Miss Deborah Bell told me, I think she was trying to work on it, but she hurt her hand, so, uh, or her hand is not well. Healing, that type thing. So I just want to say, do does anyone have any questions? I I um uh, I particularly wrapped my elephant dish. I wrapped it last week. How we wrap it in plastic to preserve it for the moisture and everything. And I didn't even get a chance to even look at it to see how it even looks. So. I mean, I don't mind taking that out today to let you all see it if anybody needed to see it because I know that some people told me they had to uh, leave the class. If you have any questions about the, the elephant um, hitch dish, I just call it a dish because I said to you all, you can make a pot if you like, but I particularly made some kind of shallow looking bowl. So... Uh, one second. Mine is ready to be fired. Okay, so I'm going to be calling everybody for a schedule next week. No problem. Just make sure that you pack it really nice how you've already been doing so that, you know, you don't get any breakage or whatever. How you doing, Ms. Deborah Bell? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Everybody doing good? Yeah. It's good to see y'all. I miss y'all and being in our class and stuff. But it's still such a blessing to see y'all in the class online on the Zoom. Yep. Wake up, Mr. Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> How you going to sleep? <laughs> all right. Do you all have any questions about him? Yes, can I, is his name? And he can answer, but is his name first name Van Dyke or Howard? Which one is it? First name is Van Dyke, last name is Howard. 
Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> It could be the other way, huh, Howard? Well, I always say Mr. Van Dyke, so I was like, okay, but it's showing up Van Dyke Howard, so I didn't know if it was just reversed here. But okay. You know, sometimes I say to you, Miss Deborah, sometimes I say Miss Bell. Yeah. I usually don't say Miss Bell now because it's two bells in the class, Gloria and Deborah. Hi, Gloria. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. How are you? All morning. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. On that uh, elephant you made last week, were there any particular uh, sizes for the legs or uh, inches for the ball or any other pieces? Did somebody hear where she at? Yeah, she wanted to know if there were any dimensions how tall the, the the feet should be and the the depth of the bowl okay so we were going to go over a few things i definitely said to you all that if you wanted to first of all one thing i said is that we were making an animal dish as it pertains to making it with me along with the class, I said that anyone is more than welcome to make the same animal that I'm making for the purposes of you learning, going through the step-by-step -step process of what I was doing. However, being creative, if you wanted to change your animal, I said, go for it, please do so. Like some people might be making a baboon, I don't know, but however, That's not what I was asking. I'm going to answer your question, though. Sorry about that. Etheria. Yes. I'm going to send you a chat. So look in the chat. I'm getting ready to send you a chat. Okay. Give me one second. So, Miss Etheria and everyone else, I said that. When we first started, I said, if you had a piece of clay that was this size, you see this size in my hand? Yes. I said, that's fine. If that's the only clay you had to make the piece that we were making, but what I said was cut this in half so you would have clay to make the, the, the parts of the animal. So then, also, if you had this size clay, you see, you see the difference with the clay in my hand? Okay. If you only had this, you could have made that last week. However, so that, that answers your question as it pertains to the dimensions. The dimensions would have been how much of a clay you had left. I don't care if it was a really small elephant. I don't care if it was large, but as it pertains to the elephant, what I created, I stuck to making my legs look in proportion to my body. Okay. Now, I'm not trying to pick at anyone, even though sometimes we laugh at people. It's just humor. I mean, like sometimes people got to lighten up or sometimes people feelings might be hurt or people might get mad. That's all in the days work of, of living because we are human beings. We have emo emotions, but I just try to show people that no matter what happens, we love them. But I wanted to say that Mr. Fanning Cumberlander, he already turned in his head. It looks pretty much just like mine as it pertains to the body and everything. But if you see my head, the head is large. Mr. Cumberlander got like a head about this little. <laughs> and like his claw look like some kind of just a little, little little skinny string. Even though I commended him and I in my mind I said that was a good rendition or a try, so to speak. But however I said if we were in the classroom setting and if it's not it's not just that. Um, I'm going to let him know either personally or in this class because like we got to strengthen up. We in a learning process. If I say something to y'all, don't like really take it as a thing like 
we joking at you or trying to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to tell Mr. Cumberland, he has to be mindful of his proportion. That's what it is. You got to think about what size is this head supposed to be compared to the body. That's all. So some of us might be a little off in our proportion sometimes. Even me, I think my legs could be probably a little tall, but even still, the reason why I think they're looking really tall, because you see elephants high off the ground. The thing is because of the proportion of the body. It probably need really like a fatter belly or a wider body, but it's not about the body. As it compares to the, feet. the body is just a simple bowl. The actual design comes in when you add the decoration as it pertains to the um, animal. So the dish could, the, the bowl could have been like an octagon shape. And we know an elephant does not have an octagon shaped body. So I just wanted to say that as it pertains to size and proportion, it just depended on how much clay you have when you actually make the piece. But you have to take a piece from the clay that you have to pinch the bowl or pot or plate first and then have enough clay to make, make your animal. Any more questions? Yes, I have a question. My elephant doesn't have a smoke. Is it too late to try to add a mouth if it's drying? Is it completely dry? I'll have to check. Okay, the thing is, did you did you wrap it up? What was that? No. <clears throat> I was letting it dry. For, for, for oh, okay. Well, if you are letting it dry, mine is still wet somewhat, not like even soft at all. You know, this especially the trunk. This thing is like brick hard, but however, if I want to add something, all I'm going to do is take my, I'm going to take my Miss Diana, uh, I'm going to take my sponge, let's say, they don't wanna, get all fancy, fancy. Okay. Uh, all yeah. right, so we just go with check. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Okay. All right, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Yes, okay. All right. Let's see what's her name. Jaguar. Never on the phone. I know. Uh, Destiny Moss, you need to mute yourself, please. Sorry, I did. <laughs> Thank you. All right. This is leather dry. However, for this piece, Y'all wouldn't be, you, you'll be amazed. I haven't even smoothed it out, smoothed it out pretty much. But what I'm going to do today is take the paper out and I already have like a, a cup of water, which is really low. It's kind of like a bath, I would say. And how I'm going to smooth the piece is basically just by starting to brush over it back and forth. And sometimes when I see like any type of deep impression, I'm going to go back and smooth it with my fingers or whatever, if I have to. Also, I'm gonna dip this sponge into the water and kind of like bathe it like that. And that will moisten it up some because I'm going to add slip trail to the elephant. So how I'm bathing like that will actually moisten up the surface. I don't know if you have to what what do you have to add? Do you have to add something that pertains to design or actual pieces of clay, Miss Diana? Yep. I have, I okay. have to, I'm sorry, go ahead. I have to in looking at your piece, mine doesn't have a mouth. Yeah. Talking about this bottom this bottom portion right here? Yes. So I was wondering if I could carve it out with an instrument. Or add clay. Yes. You're talking about here? Yes. Okay. So I'm taking a piece of clay out. Just a small little piece of clay. I'm rolling this and I'm smashing it in my hand. It's like a circle, so to speak. This is what I showed y'all last week. Now when you when you, uh, all you have to do is just like I said, bathe the bottom of the elephant's mouth 
with the sponge or the brush and then take your this clay is like stuck to my hand so that's good it didn't go anywhere you can either roll this out with a um what do you call it a, a rolling pin or you can just press it out like i did with my hand all you want to do is cut it in half i got mine just a little bit over half because if i go right to the middle it's a little too short for me so i'm just cutting that right and after you've wet that portion all you have to do is curve that piece and attach it within to the face of the elephant just smooth it in I mean, I know I already, it's not bad, it's not I already create a beautiful project, Miss Diane. I know you probably already know that. I don't know if I answered your question, but you can add to that clay that you already have, even if it's dry. All you got to do is like moisten it again, right in that chin area away. Okay. No problem. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Somebody was just saying something. Miss Deborah Bell, you drinking beer? <laughs> All right, cheers. <laughs> All right, cheers. All right, cheers. You should have been doing a commercial the way you was drinking. It looked so good. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's hot, so I want to make sure I didn't burn myself as I was pouring it up here. <laughs> okay, what you doing, teacher? <laughs> What's she saying? She said she was going on with the teaching. Say what, teacher? Stop being impatient, Etheria. We're having fun. You, you, you started out saying that you were going to show us something today. I didn't say that. Oh. Uh, I said, said I'm not going on with another project today because y'all don't have oh. to be, And because I don't want to be making too much stuff while y'all not finished with all y'all other projects. I'm doing okay. one of my projects, teacher. Sometimes y'all get jealous when I get put attention on other people in here. I know, huh? I know. But yeah, <laughs> that's all that was. Jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Miss Regina? Hey, this is like being back in class again. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Deborah Bell. <laughs> Yep. Okay, the pieces that I picked up, I finished them. The, the elephant was laughing at y'all or with y'all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, that's... Remember I said however you shape or fashion your tail, it could be possibly like a handle. And y'all see how I'm holding my piece? Very careful under the bottom. If it was like bone dry, I would not even be picking it up. Trust me. No way. And two hands. Yes, two hands. Not one, because the weight shifts. If I pick it up with one hand, yeah, man. it might be heavy. Uh, uh, I got it. <laughs> it might be too heavy on one end and just collapse out of your head. Mrs. Regina, you had said something not too long ago. I said I finished the project that I came up there to pick up that you that I had to put together. Okay, no problem. Oh. So you probably uh, came in on the class late, but I said to everybody, we're going to have a, a schedule next week for you all to, uh, you know, fire a schedule. I'll be calling today and tomorrow. All right. So right now, I want to go through a whole, uh, what do you call it, presentation. So let's see. Y'all want to y'all want to suggest something for the class? Or uh, Miss Theory, you got something to teach? Anybody have any uh, any innovative? Ideas that they've come up with, something you can do. If not, we move it right along. We only got. Have you, have you finished your slump clay? I made two things that day. I did uh, 
the slump piece, and what else was it? The day before I did something else. However, both of those pieces, I I bought them up. They were oh. so good. <laughs> Like, especially as quick as I did the towel, the slump piece, yeah, I balled that up and whatever I made the day before, because it was a whole nother different project, I balled that up as well. So that's the last one I have to do is the slump. Okay, well, I'm not, I know, I know you're not trying to say it like in that uh, definite type of way, but even though you say you have to, I know you mean you don't have to, but I know you told me you were interested in making that piece, but those pieces are just for demonstration purposes. And if you, if that's something that you want to do, you're more than welcome, but it's oh. like a class project. Oh, I have okay. something. These Man. little containers for slip trays about this size. There's two in a pack at the uh, dollar store right now. Um, I left them in the car. But they're they're about this size, and there's two in a pack, and they're at the dollar store right now. Can I see but, a tip closer? Yeah, it's the same little tip that's on this one. Wow! So if you want to go get some? They're the one what? right there, um, the one right there on Fairburn and MLK had them oh, this morning. The Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree. What did I say? No, the, the Dollar, dollar store. store. I was just about to ask you which dollar store, but yeah. Yeah, the Dollar Tree. No problem. They're two in a pack, about this size. So what department? What, what area? Uh, in over the where all the crafty stuff is, because I tried class. using, I tried using the one that I got with the cake um, decorating, and it just, it, it doesn't work good. But when you mm. did that one the other day with this little tube like that, that, that um, that's much better. So they have them right now, two yeah. for a dollar. So everybody, uh, the Dollar Tree and some of these other stores have been getting a little bit more elaborate in their, uh, or more variety in their art supplies. So they have like an art supply section. That's what she's talking about. It's in that. Yeah, yeah a lot of stuff. They had stencils that you can use to slip trail your um, design on with a stencil. They had some of those over there too. Yeah, I bought some designs from the dollar store that you can design that you can roll your clay over and cut it, take it out, make designs. I bought a couple of things from over there, me and uh, Miss Carrie. Yes, yeah, she means the pattern plates that we roll over the clay to get. Right, the right. I bought two of those. They were nice. I got you, Kim. You said something about the, the containers for the structure had to be clear. I thought that's what you said. Well, that's what Miss Deborah Bell was just saying. You can get that some of those. She said you can. They have some containers at the Dollar Tree. Meaning, like, can you show it again, Miss Deborah? She yeah, said this, that that's an option. They come two in the pack for a dollar. But they're clear, and they're clear, Etheria. This okay. is just something that I have. Uh, I thought she said something about them being clear. This yeah, is they're clear. Slip they're trail. just like that. This is an actual bottle that comes from the art supply store that says Snoop Trail. It's clear. That's why you see the gray clay through here. But however, what I was telling you all, if you find other products, they're just as good. You know, like that's a real okay. deal to have that small, because this is a small, and some people already told me they had the really big bottles that you yeah. mustard and ketchup. ketchup and stuff. They said they like, were really like those one. cards for the hand. Yeah. Oh yes, but they're that size that you have right there, Kimberly, and clear. So it's good because the slip trail you can you can that's see. The, the that's color. the large one, Miss. What Miss Gloria had. It's oh, have a large one. It's, 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 it's soft. Large to squeeze. So this, mine is very soft. Man, so it's very, the, the, the plastic is very soft, so it's easy to squeeze. Oh, yes, it's soft because you can see me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, however, still having a large bottle, it might be hard to hold it, Thank there's content in it, and to be able to control it. But I still say if you get a large bottle, always have one. It might be different things that you're trying to do. So, you know, you have to use different sizes of the slip trail to see what works best for you. That's all.
I also have these came um, these came from Family Dollar. Oh wow! And it's wow. three and it's three on a pack. Okay. Oh wow, that's even better. I like those. Mm -hmm. And they're soft. Can you put? Hold on. Can you put that back up again? Yeah, those are even better. Because you don't need a lot. You don't need to make a lot of one. Out it's of can you please open up the tip on that glue so I can see the hole? Okay. That'll allow a lot to come out. And one thing with these slip trails, thank you, Miss Gloria. Thank you, Miss Deborah Bell. Thank you, everybody. Uh, one thing with these slip trails, after you have used, for example, I've been shaking this because I know I'm going to slip trail this elephant sooner mm. or later. But after you've used these pieces, you need to take your uh, applicator off and really rinse it out because what you'll find is the dirt will dry. The clay or the dirt will dry all in the tip of it and it'll be hard to like get that out. But it's not going to be like uh, impossible, but you just, I would still just maintain cleaning it out so you won't have to, you know, next time. The thing I wasn't sure about when I was mixing mine is how much color to put in to the slip to get the color that you want. So what would you... I just think you should start with a small amount and then mix it and if it gets like to be a rich color, then that's enough. So if it still look like clay or something, then you have to add more color. But as long as, like, if you put a, a let's just say, like, food color, and if you put a couple of drops of red in there and mixed it up, and the whole, uh, the, the contents of the slip trail became red, then that's enough. Because some colors are more powerful than others. Like, you know, just like when you paint a wall, if you paint a wall black, you're probably going to need, like, one coat, but if you paint it white or something light, you're gonna need more coats to make it like smooth. Lighter colors take more paint sometimes. Can you put food coloring in there, Kim? Uh, Does that work? Ooh. I was just saying that as an example. Uh, actually, things are really experimental. Sometimes you could try just to see how something like that goes. That's how people came up with and things they just tried it out with them or so. And alcohol, what about alcohol inks? Have you ever tried alcohol ink in, in the uh, slip? No, but um, one thing is you got to think about alcohol really dries stuff out. So I don't know how that would take as far as with the chemicals of the clay, but I think it's worth still experimenting and trying. I see somebody's uh their video says TC. Did you have a question? I see the young man online. It looked like, did you have a question? Okay, I guess not. He just want to say hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever TCL is, I just want to say thanks for joining the class and hello to you. And uh, so right now, Give me one second. How many of you know about the Christmas gala that we're going to be having on uh, December 3rd? And who, how many of you are going to participate? One person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, young people, we have a Christmas gala coming up. I know some of you probably don't celebrate the holidays. However, we plan on, um, one thing we plan on doing this year for Thanksgiving is on Thanksgiving Day, you know we are generally off work, but we will be probably reaching out to uh, young people such as yourself who we think might be at home alone or needs to be uplifted or call that type of thing. We're going to be doing that on Thanksgiving. And for the Christmas gala, we're having a Christmas tree lighting that's going to be an individual thing in each of our homes. So if you have a small tree or a tree you want to display, we all going to light our trees at the same time, which is going to be fun. That's going to be plenty of poetry from my Word Up poetry class. We're going to have uh, the divas will be 
performing. Y'all know the Darnell Divas will be performing. And um, I want to say it's another group. I want to say... Uh, the drama, uh, the Darnell players. We're yeah, going to do... The Darnell players do will something. be doing a... Thank you, Miss Deborah. The Darnell players will be doing a... The a night short before Christmas. Performance. And um, I think Anthony Bailey will be probably uh, blessing us with some of that beautiful melodic music. Um, I don't know if it's just going to be him or his band, just his band, but uh, Destiny Moss and Aja Simmons from the kitchen will be making some delicious uh, holiday treats for us. We have like a really full program, so please just join us for that. And um, also on, I want to say December 9th, if you want to write any of these dates down, if you have not been checking your email, the actual Christmas gala is on December 3rd, but December 9th, we will be having our annual ugly sweater contest. Ugly sweater. So some of y'all know y'all got some of them beautiful ugly sweaters. Go ahead and pull them out. All right. The gala's on December 9th? Yes, no, December 3rd. Oh. The sweater contest is on the 9th. Thank you. All right, we got about 10 quick questions. A crack. A crack in the glaze is called what? Is it called cracking, flaking, shrinking, or crazing? Drinking. Miss Diana, you got to unmute yourself. What you say, Miss Diana? Cracking. Okay, I'm going to go with cracking. Incorrect. It's called crazing. Crazing. C -R wow. I'm writing that in the chat if y'all want to look it up. But most of the time when my glaze crack, I wasn't intent it wasn't intentional. No, uh, you'll see like little minuscule cracks in the glaze. That happens in the process of when the when you when the glaze is fired. It oh. has nothing to do with you. It's the heat, the temperature that when the glaze gets to vitrification or to its mat maturation when it's mature, sometimes the heat when it cools down. Sometimes if I open up the kiln too early, the coolness hitting the heat might make it crack. Okay. Sometimes overheating might make it crack. So it's called crazy. Good job. We learned something new today. You you get your lesson, Mr. Theory of Pearson? Ma'am. <laughs> I said you getting your lesson. You said you want to learn something today. <laughs> how, are, how are crazy? crazy. Crazy like the instructor. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. Are cherry glazes typically purchased? Are they purchased powdered, liquid, paste, or cannot be purchased? Repeat the question. Repeat the question. How are pottery glazes typically purchased? Like bought in the store, powdered, liquid, 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 or liquid, liquid. Y'all going with liquid? Yes. Yeah. All right. I just want y'all to know that the answer is wrong. <laughs> I already knew it was powdered because the first glazes came in powdered form. They are formulated or made from clay. Actually, the liquid glazes that we use in class, this is like a new uh, creation or phenomenon. Everybody in the whole pottery or ceramic world has been going crazy over the last 10, 20 years because of these liquid glazes, because uh, before there were only the powder that you had to mix yourself. I think Ms. Deborah Bell has mixed some of those powdered uh, I thought you told me one time you used some powder. Like, anyway, if you did. That's a misleading question. You said the glaze. It was misleading. Nah, because you what said, they said is they just recently made liquid glazes. The most still biggest, largest purchase of glazes in the world is by powder. P 
people, the people that make the liquid glazes buy powder glazes to make the liquid glazes. I thought you said the glazes that we buy for you is purchased for the class. How do they come? <laughs> it doesn't say how are the pottery glazes typically purchased for the class. It didn't say that. <laughs> so Kim, what do you mix the powder with? Because I saw some online and I didn't know what to do. I said I'm not buying them because mine are all in class are all liquid. Well, usually it's like water, or they'll tell you like what compounds or different things you need in them. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> they have been the first type of pottery. Was it thumb containers, spoons, pitch pots, or sports? Pitch pot. Pitch pot. Okay, that's two on pitch pot, so that's what I'm going with. That's pitch what I go to. Correct, correct, correct. All right, we got about five or six more. Which potentially harmful element can be found in powdered pottery glazes? Is it lead? Yes. <laughs> Is it titanium, gold, or copper? What's your answer? I think it's lead. Lead. Y'all are really smart because you know that means you're paying attention. In class, you know, the jars or the bottles say lead free. And that's why they are dinnerware safe and you're able to eat um, out of the dishes, so to speak. But once again, don't forget, I always tell you all, if you're making a plate or a bowl or a coffee mug, some people really love the crystal, the crystal text glazes, the glazes with the little rocks in them. Usually, almost all the time, crystal text glazes are not dinnerware safe. So I say, even though you love those beautiful spots, you don't want to put them on the dishes that you plan on actually using because you're not going to be able to use it. All right, moving right along. Which of the following is not considered a type of pottery? Porcelain, stoneware, earthenware, brickware. Brickware. It's brickware. Brick yeah. Brick. Y'all smart. Y'all smart. <laughs> like, y'all don't need me no more. It seems like y'all I'm not teaching y'all nothing no more. <laughs> All right. Which is a decorative technique where a piece of wet slip makes abstract patterns on pottery? I'm gonna say that again. Which one of these is a decorative technique where a piece of wet slip makes abstract patterns on pottery? Is it twisting, slipping, marbling, or spinning? Slipping. Slipping. <laughs> twisting. I heard to say marbling twisting. because it's slipping twisting. is you're not, you gotta squeeze it. So marbling. I think it would be a soft clay. It sounds like slip tracing to me. That's what it sounds like to me. Okay, I'm going with slipping, but that's incorrect. The word, the correct, the correct one is marbling. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, that, would be, that would be the difference in that and slip tracing. The reason I said marbling is because what she said that you take soft clay as opposed to liquefying clay that you need for slip oh, okay. Soft clay, you would put on there and that then- That makes sense. Yeah. I said a piece. I said a piece. Of wet slip. All right, we're almost done. What are the two types of fires that could be used on a piece of pottery? Is it reduction and oxidation? Is it carbonation and microwave? Is it induction and carbonation? Or is it reduction and terracotta? Reduction and terracotta. Reduction and terracotta. Oxidation. <laughs> that and oxidation. Reduction terracotta. I don't have a clue. What I don't even the funniest, well, I word, the funniest words in here that make you know it's not. It's not going to be terracotta. Terracotta has nothing to do with heat. 
Terracotta is oxidation. That one ain't oxidation. Okay, you know it ain't gonna be microwave. Microwave right. that's gonna do with heat, but you don't use a microwave. The first one. So we had the next ones was induction and carbonation, or is it reduction and oxidation? Reduction. Reduction. reduction and oxidation. Good job, Mr. That's right, everybody. It's reduction and oxidation. You know, carbonation has to do I told you from the beginning. Okay. Yeah, good job. It's okay. Good job. <laughs> so that's you did a good job on your hair today, too. I like your hair. Me, too. Thank yeah, you. it's growing, too. Starting to lock you. again. It's growing because of y'all, all the love y'all give me. Oh, Wait, I'll be down your back. Oh, yeah. You're be not worried about us in the class anymore. Oh, y'all made my hair come out, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six, six, straight out. I'm just playing. <laughs> Approximately which temperature must clay be heated to for it to harden into a porous pottery? Is it 1,000 Celsius? 100, 350, or 500? You can't remember. I said 1,000. 500. I said 500. I remember 350. You can take your oven to 500, and that won't cure the clay. So right. Yeah, but it's a different kind of cook. It's a different kind of oven. What y'all thinking about this? Y'all didn't hear what Miss Deborah Bell said? She said you yeah. can put some clay in the oven, your oven at home, and that's gonna get to five hundred. Is that gonna be hot enough? No. 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 Well, no. I'm asking the oven and the and the and and what and what and what, and what you can do? Are, are they different? Aren't they different? The oven temperature and that temperature is different, right? Yeah, but most of y'all said three fifty and five hundred. I said no. 500. I say I know I said five hundred. But... That's what I'm saying. No, I said a thousand. Okay, let's see what it's going to say. Let's just see. All right. It was this was a trick question, Mr. Ethereum. The it said what temperature must the clay be heated for it to harden into a porous pottery? Porous, meaning it didn't say all the way to full vitrification. So if it got up to probably half of the temperature that the kiln goes, and our particular kiln at the job, at this class, goes to 2,150 degrees. But this one says that it will be porous and hard, just like a hard, porous thing at 500 degrees. All right. Look at me. <laughs> okay, so does that mean I could put my piece in the oven at 500 and, and bake? Yes, but it's not going to get to the full bisque that it needs to. It's just going to be hard, like a por porous means like a. Um, what you like, saying, Ms. Diana? Breathable. It's still yeah. not. It's yeah. still not completely all the way hard. Porous could be kind of like that stuff we clean our feet with. I can't really say it. Pumice stone, something like that, even though that's kind of soft and still hard. It still has right. like air and stuff in it. Master. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Hold on one second. Okay, I, I made this so big here. Uh, right here. Be okay. I, uh, it's, it's already been done a long time ago. But I, I put it in the oven at 500, and it, and it got hard, you know, real hard. Um, you can still see inside when it gets hard, but it didn't quite go to what you do at the kiln. But it was, hard, it was hard, and it's uh, still hard. I haven't it for a while, and it's a service that I made, and I put it in the oven at 500. Okay, have you used that soap dish? Like in the bathroom? No, I haven't. Or the sink? I have not used it. Okay, I well, have not used it. It's continuing to break down. 
Well, no, it don't contain Did that break happen when you had it in the oven? Uh, it broke when I take it out the oven. Okay. Can you try to break so I can see it? Isn't it in the break? Isn't it darker? It's darker yeah, in the it's break. Still, that means it's still wet. It doesn't mean it's still wet. Mm -hmm. It means that it still didn't get cooked to the complete okay. situation where right. it would be like white as a bitch. That's why I said it, that right. temperature would not make it go all the way to a bitch because that clay all the way through right. the spirit and everybody else, it would be white. And how long did you? Right. How long you uh, great? Thank you so much. How much long did you that. bake it to get it to that point? Uh, I, I had it five hundred. How, uh, how long? An hour? Two hours? How uh, long? About 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 three or four hours. Three or four yeah. hours at five hundred. Now, Kim, uh, if if we took our pieces and did that before we brought them into you that would protect them from uh, breaking as easily, right? If we did that? No, it's not the proper process because even though you might do that at home, when I put it in the kiln, you know, the, the step that it's already at, you don't know if the heat then is going to burst it or whatever. You just don't know what's going to happen. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Once again, you can experiment and do that if you like, but and two, my stove that I cook with at home, the oven that you use, I would probably, me personally, I probably would never, ever use uh, maybe like a clay that um, on the instructions, like they have some air dry clay that you can just sit out to air dry. They have some clays that you can polymers and different type of clays that you can use in your oven at home because they're safe. But this particular clay, I would not use it in my oven and then go back and cook in my oven because of the chemicals, like the right. chemicals that uh, may be cooking in and out of the clay because, you know, air dry clay is just air dry clay, meaning like it's just going to dry by the, with the air. Yes. That's why it up have, right here. Yes, if you have a container of that, you've been saving it for five, six years, you might open that thing up and it's already brick hard. Well, yeah. I kept this for about three years and Ooh. yeah, and it's still, Stop. I'm still, yeah. That's it's good. It's still good. That's good. So it's probably like- One other question, Kim. Ma'am? Is it certain, is it certain thing as overcooking the clutch? Yeah. Over baking it? So- And that's why- if they do it at home and then you do it at, at the center, then it would oh, be too cooked. <laughs> I even really say oh, cook. Because the clays do have a time that they're supposed to be cooked. I can't necessarily say, like Mr. Van Dyke said, he's keeping it in there three or four hours. Somebody else might keep it in there 30 minutes or six hours. But the temperatures would make a difference as it pertains to cook when I put it in the clay. It might pretty much not be a good thing as it pertains to the piece coming out right. But however, sometimes mm -hmm. people sort of a little upset when people say, uh, Kim, can you fire this again? Then they'll go back and put something else on and say, can you fire this again? And then they'll come back and say, can you fire this again? I say, no, you can't fire a piece three and four times. The, the actual process is supposed to be two times. But when you... If you do start to fire some piece three and four and five times, you're going to start seeing that the piece is going to start warping. It's overcooking and the shape is changing. You know, you're going to be like, why, why did my plate, you know, warp pretty much like wood or something like that? It's because you're overcooking it. So well, that's 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 part. Fire people's pieces over and the color change. If you might have had a bright blue on your piece, but when I fired it over and over, the blue yeah, yeah. turning a darker color, like almost black. Those colors will start cooking because don't forget, when you fire a piece as it pertains to glaze, glaze turns right back into liquid. So each time that liquid is bubbling up, it's turning darker and darker each time because it's cooking black. Any other questions? So tomorrow, how many people have any clay left? 
we're gonna do a really cute demonstration tomorrow. If you all see the size of this elephant, so to speak, with my hand, I can't even really cover this up with my whole hand. The piece that I'm going to make tomorrow is gonna be a three dimensional piece, but it's gonna be as small as my hand, so to speak. So hopefully if you have some clay, you will be able to join in to make that piece. And we've had a really, really fun and interesting class. You all are so smart how you um, basically try to think and decipher out the questions, the trivia of, about ceramics that I were that I was giving you. I'm proud of you for that. And thanks for uh, show and tell and sharing your uh, tools and some of your techniques that you have performed today. Um, I was asking if you all had any clay, but anybody have even a small piece of clay, you'll be able to do it tomorrow. At that time, if people that don't have clay, maybe I'll just probably postpone or however, but I think I will go ahead and make that piece tomorrow. Just remember that you can take notes to make the piece yourself. And um, thanks for joining Handbuilt Pottery. My name is Kimberly Wright. Have a wonderful and blessed day, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Peace and love. Bless. Be blessed.